Morning, everybody. Hey, some of y'all want some cubes today? Huh? You guys want some cubes instead of grain? Morning, everybody. Chad, how are their farms? Are they following me? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hey, that's far enough, sir. That's far enough, sir. That's far enough. You don't need in the cabin. All right, watch out. Watch out now. Somebody's thirsty. Morning, ladies. Morning. Here. Put some there. Put some there. Here you go, buddy. Man, you're looking healthy. Come here. Woo. Come on. Who's going to notice first? Oh, hey there. How you doing? You guys leave your poor sister Tina up there. That's not nice. That's not nice. Hey, there's more right here. Somebody needs to come eat these. Hey, come on. Woo! There you go. They're so silly. Look, she walked away from that pile to come push these guys out of the way and eat from theirs. All right, let's get some grain for the Velcro giraffes. Let's go. I'll walk up there with you. Let's go. Morning, Rosie. Good morning. Let's go. Hey, look who it is. What you doing? Come on, let's go up here. How long until Bruce comes up here? Huh? Any taggers? All right. All looks good in here. Wish you guys would quit doo-dooing in your bed though. That's just gross. Hey, you gotta move lady. I don't wanna get kicked. It's been unseasonably warm and it still is. It's 55 degrees this morning. On Saturday, the day you guys are seeing this. And yes, was it a week ago? Straight up a week ago. Hey, 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 hey. Christmas Eve, just one week ago, and the day before it, we had like record setting wind chills. And then here we are, 55 degrees. Now it's still winter. I mean, when the wind blows, you can feel some cooler air, but it's not cold. So they're not even sleeping in here. Not sleeping in here one bit, but that's all right. There's food all over the place. Yeah, here they are fighting over one station. Look, you want it over here? Is that the problem? Look, there you go. Rosie. So silly. Holly. <laughs> she gonna do it again, look out.
I see that uh, somebody did a number on our fence though. I'm guessing that's the alpacas because the cows, cows don't usually like, in my experience anyway, they don't usually like mess with stuff. And what am I trying to say? Cause you guys are like, oh yeah, they do, they do it, I'll do it. I know, listen. What I mean is cows don't usually like intentionally mess with stuff. They just push through things and that's what this looks like. Or I wonder, I wonder if that broke. Yeah, it did. Just straight up broke. You get a new clip. Whatever did it, pulled it hard enough to rip the uh, lead off of here. Which may have actually been, hey, hey, doggone it, still on, Chad. Wake up. I grabbed the rope because the lead was on the ground, so I knew it wasn't on, but she's still on. Go. Not perfect, but it's all right. Man, those of y'all that live in the Midwest, you know where I'm headed with this, but since it's been unseasonably warm, and even that cold snap was unseasonably cold, like it never gets that cold this early in the year that was chilly so i'm kind of nervous as to what the rest of the season's gonna hold like when it's this warm it's like oh man oh no it's gonna get chilly all right fix that to an extent well, not to an extent i fixed it now we just plug her back in down there on the other side Man, I can't wait to clean this up and run that fence right down here. And then we'll take all this fence out, which I know may seem counterproductive to some of you guys. That barbed wire, where's, I know I patched it over here somewhere. The barbed wire's been here a long time. And the guy that used to hay this field for the previous owners, at one point he just like drove through the barbed wire. I mean, he cut it took it down and then that's how I gained entrance into the field to hay it which is silly because there was never a gate up here I don't know why he did that but so needless to say the bar wire that exists either has to be restretched repaired all that good stuff because I've got cattle panels so temporary solution but it works it works nothing holding us back just more pressing uh more pressing projects, if you will. We'll do the same thing over here. Pretty excited. Yeah, we'll clean all this up. This is just left over. The water line was buried. Just needs to be dragged and raked, straightened out. We'll come off of that post right there. We'll leave our frost free on the other side. We'll come off of that post right there, go all the way down. And the reason I'm gonna leave that frost free there on the outside is we gotta protect our frost freeze because Miss Tessie is murdering them. Like she's got a passion for scratching on those frost freeze. So much that one of them, she's almost folded over up here and it's actually attached to our main water line. I don't want her to tear that up. When she turns it, that's attached to the main water line. So I'm, I'm picturing in my head underground some stress on that water line in the dirt. And we do not want that because we've been actually very, very fortunate doing our water line ourselves, saving a ton of money that it did not freeze, it did not leak. I actually check the meter often when the water's off on the entire farm. And if you don't know on a meter, there's like a, it's like an odometer on your car, like the old analog ones, not digital, but ours has an analog meter and we can look at it and see if it's spinning when the water's off, that means you've got a leak. The 
sometimes the leak is so slow that it's very hard to tell because when those gears turn that uh, clock over, uh, sometimes the leak's so slow you can't tell. <laughs> I mean, it's right where I left it. That's incredible. Some of you guys were saying that I should have screwed it to this. I did. That's one of the walls. And then I had a two by 16. It was just a shade shorter than this one, like a foot. Cause I actually tucked a two by six by 16 underneath there. Here, let's get in here. It might be windy. I tucked a two by six by 16 underneath here. And that was my header for that other uh, shelter. Man, the wind just got underneath the lip of it and that was it. I still like this thing and there is no freezing temperatures, like nothing even close to 32 in the forecast still for the next 10 days. There's a little precipitation on Monday, like water, rain, it ain't gonna hurt nobody. Plus it's gonna be like 50 degrees. They'll probably like it, especially the highlands. They can use this if need be. They can go stand in the trees and all that good stuff. So, sorry for the dung. I actually kick it out of here and out there. That's why it looks like there's a lot. I need to come up here and use a harrow or something and spread it out. But anyway, some of you guys had some good ideas on how to set this up so that it doesn't do that again. And I'm open to suggestions. I think what I may do, if you remember, when it was sleeting, and I mean sleeting, like the snow, it was actually so cold, it didn't really snow. It just kind of dropped some moisture on us and sleeted a little bit. But when it was negative 20 wind chill and it was sleeting, both the steers and the highlands went to the very back of the pasture and stood in the trees. When both of these, <laughs> when both of these were perfectly vertical and having no issues they still chose the trees i may take this not today it's too windy uh, it's not it's not bad as it has been but i really don't like working with sheet metal and things that can literally cut me in half when there's any kind of breeze i am going to probably build a structure back in the back where they were hiding in those trees it'll have to have a little bit longer north wall we will uh We'll make it work. You guys know me, I'm gonna aim it the right direction. I was really, really hoping this would work, but this is the top of our property, one of the highest spots, if not the highest. And when that wind comes out of the Southwest, if it grabs anything, it's going for a ride. Not to mention, I built this once, if you guys are new here. This was the first structure I built, and I used like two by eights and some scrap wood I had laying around. And it wasn't very heavy. I was kind of just asking for it. This one right here, I used two by sixes, like basically as floor joists, roof joists. I mean, it's, it's so much heavier, so much more durable. I've been trying to piece it together, but I just need to go get some more headers or more uh, 16 footers and weight it down. Some of y'all ask why I don't uh, cement it down. I don't know what we want in this pasture. I don't know if I want permanent structure. So I don't want to do anything permanent and have to like take it up later. Now it's no big deal. I mean, you're talking about a bag of concrete and a few four by four posts. Well, I've got a tractor, you know, they'll pull right out of the ground if we ever decide to move it. But it's just kind of counterproductive in my opinion to do it if I'm not going to leave it. I know this is, stop, stop it. I know this is, uh, she, she wants me to scratch her head, but when I do it, she comes at me. Ah. No. That's all right, now she knows. She thought she was getting cubes. So, we got a little bit of an issue. We do, little donk, I'm sorry. Something happened that I was not aware of. So, be honest, how many of you knew that pine needles can actually cause a heifer or a cow to abort when and if pregnant? I didn't know. Never heard that, never had a reason to hear that, didn't know anything about it. Um, my buddy Ben, our neighbor, he's got cows all over that place. You know, there's cedar trees all over his property as well. You know, he's never said this. 
Here's what it boils down to. I had no idea that that was a thing. I don't know if it happens like a lot. I don't know if the percentage is a little. As you guys know, every now and then on our community page, I share channels that I'm watching. You know, other guys that I like watching, for example, Sleep Ranch, Carson, you know, 150 year old family farm, super knowledgeable, uh, Farmer Tyler. You know, I watch those guys. I like learning with them. Now, they're far ahead of, they're, they're way ahead of me. What I like about both those guys, and I've only messaged uh, Carson, I've not talked to Tyler. What I like about both those guys is they're not afraid to say when they've made a mistake or done something wrong or, you know, hey, we should have thought this through or let's try it a different way. I'm the same way. I don't need to know everything at all. I, I, I couldn't care less. True story, Carson up at Sleep Ranch, he posted a video a couple days ago about getting some cows out of the Black Hills because there was a lot of pine trees they were eating on. And those pine trees can apparently cause a heifer or a cow to abort its calf. I haven't talked to him yet. I've got his uh, contact info. and I may hit him up and just ask him, you know, a few questions, we'll see. But those guys are both linked down below. I'm not being sly about this. I'm not being uh, Debbie Downer. But here's the thing. If we had 100 mama cows and I accidentally made this mistake with a Christmas tree, leaving it out for the goats and the donkeys, not a big deal. You know, I, I shouldn't say not a big deal. You know, you don't want to do that. But as you guys know, we lost our bull to pneumonia. And I'm very, very confident that June is pregnant because with Fred, with Fred's uh, calf, if you will, which means Fred's legacy lives on. I'm very confident in that because I have not seen her come into heat. She does not care about the neighbor's bull. I just thought of an idea where to put this, so walk with me. But Tessie visits the neighbor's fence often, calls out to their bull, and even the steers kind of go after her a little bit. The reason I'm kind of, you know, doggone it, is because if this were to be, I know it's true, but if it were to happen, that would be Fred's legacy. So that is a real bummer. There is no way to possibly know everything about cows. Even Gary Walker, right? The herdsman, my go-to for any and all information will be the first one to tell you he's learning every day. It's like Carson and Tyler, I'm sure. So, hang on a minute, let me get this up here without getting attacked. What's up? Meh. So, here. Ready? Rah. All right. The cows cannot get to that. The donkeys can't get to it. So that's where we're gonna leave it. That's where we're gonna leave it. I'm not as worried because there's still a lot of needles on that tree. And if you look close, see the needles? I think it's this guy, thankfully, more than it is the girls. And actually the thumbnail I didn't mean to mislead anybody, but it's actually Tessie. It's not June. What are you doing? It's actually Tessie, not June, standing over the Christmas trees. I'm pretty, uh... They just ate more cubes than they're actually necessary, and they're still hungry. It's so funny. Let me show you something, because I know somebody's gonna ask. This may drive some of y'all nuts. Well, let me show you something. That is about $125 worth of, what are they called, Thuja trees? Because as soon as we ordered them, we learned that they can actually be poisonous. My goodness, man. That's farm life. You just learn something every day, but the reason I just left them in the greenhouse and I haven't watered them is I didn't want anybody to get sick on them. 
So instead of planting them, instead of worrying about a windbreak and trying to get ahead a little bit on the farm, we just left them over there. Man, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer. This isn't a bad video. I have no idea how many needles it takes to cause a calf or a, he or a heifer or a cow to do that. I have no idea. I have no idea if it's a, you know, eat 10 needles and it happens. I don't know if some cows and heifers are actually resistant to whatever causes that. I don't know. We don't have, like we've got some cedar trees growing around here, but the girls don't walk up and eat them. The reason I'm more I'm concerned a lot is because I walked over and put that Christmas tree like right by their feed bunk where I, where I feed them. It was as if saying, please eat this. I don't know. We were at the vet yesterday getting that last puppy, which somebody really needs to come get. We've got one Cavapoo, po Cavapoo Poodle, which makes it a Cavapoo, left. Somebody really needs to get that thing because Ray is getting more and more attached and I do not want another dog. Somebody come get it. I'll make you a smoking deal. I might even throw in a rooster. Just kidding. Just kidding, kind of. But we were at the vet yesterday getting some shots. Second round of puppy shots. And I talked to Dr. Huff at Miami Animal Hospital. I did not have a chance to ask him about the pine needles. There's no reason to. Um, I, you know, Carson wouldn't post a video about it if it weren't true. I did ask him about preg checking June. He can absolutely do it. I did not ask him about Tessie yet um, because I don't think Tessie's pregnant. But what we will do is take both of them to get them preg checked. But I was going to try and do it this week or next. But I'm going to give it a couple of weeks because if she's going to abort, I don't want to take her in, get her preg checked, get all of our hopes up that it's Fred's calf. And then she aborts a week later. So I'm going to give it a little bit and just, uh, and just see. There was no way I could have known guys. It is what it is. I'm pretty bummed, but it's a reality and it's a learning lesson. There was no way I could have known. I mean, when your calf gets pregnant or I'm sorry, when your heifer or your cow gets pregnant, nobody types in, can anything make this cow abort? I mean, it's just, it's just not, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not what you do. So we'll see. I am not okay. Last night, Ray and I, well, let me backtrack for Christmas. Let's get in here so you guys can hear me. Ray's office where she works, a doctor's office, they all get each other gifts and such. And somebody was kind enough to gift us a gift card to a very fancy restaurant. We went and spent it last night and had a great time. Beautiful restaurant, beautiful place. Um, I don't want to say the name because it had, what I'm going through had nothing to do. It's not the restaurant's fault, but I ordered a bison tenderloin and got it medium rare. And I eat enough steak to know when something's not good, like cooked right or cooked thoroughly. But man, I was so hungry and it was so good. <laughs> Tasted good, I should say that I just ate it. And then I ate my crab and mac and cheese and some lobster and uh, came home and spent all night sweating in the bathroom. Let's just put it that way, doing work. And I'm still sweating and I'm still hurting. I am not okay. So Ray actually just texted me and <clears throat> I'm gonna wrap it up here and go home and hang out and drink some fluids and stay hydrated and do all the things you're supposed to do. Cause I need this to pass. I need this to go away. I don't think it was, I mean, technically it's food poisoning, but it's not like, you know, I think it may have just been undercooked. You know, bison's really, really lean and it's, it's hard to cook 
meat that is lean if you don't know what you're doing because it doesn't look like fatty meat when you cook it. I'm sweating and it's 55 degrees, but I'm also cold at the same time. I mean, I, can I do a look at? Woo! So, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting beefy boy ground beef to eat chili later because when this passes, I mean I'm still hungry. I'm not dying. I'm just sick, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna fill these water troughs. Go home and check on the kiddos and Ray and edit this video and then we may come out here a little bit and um, shoot, you guys really seem to like that. And, you know, it's just part of our life. It's not like, like I said before, we're not trying to be cool or tactical. If we were, I'd, <laughs> if we were, I'd break out some of the real hardware. I just believe, especially living on a farm, we need a couple people to know how to uh, defend this place. The case is certainly old enough. And uh, many of you grew up in a time where, you know, you were taught how to shoot at very young ages. Ninja, what you doing, man? Such a beautiful rooster. I need to push this little one over there so it catches that water, but I was waiting to see what he's gonna do. I'm wasting water, bro. What are you gonna do? Watch out. He's so gentle, though, for such a big rooster. So anyway, I'm gonna go home, rest up, feel better. I'm gonna let that water trough finish filling up and then I'll take care of that. Please go check out, this isn't the end of the video. Hang out, we've got something cool to show you. Please go check out Carson Sleep at Sleep Ranch. And Tyler, sorry buddy, I don't know your last name, but Farmer Tyler, I'll link him down below. And uh, Just super cool, humble guys, young family guys. And, uh, just really value their opinions and stuff. So anyway, check them out down below. Go over tell them Audi from Adler Farms. You guys know what to do. Man, I am really not feeling good. We gotta go. Ninja, wrap it up, buddy. I gotta go, man. We don't have plumbing out here, as you guys know. And I ain't afraid to do it like the bears do in the woods. Oh man, with what I've been through in the last 12 hours, I'd really like to be at home. <laughs> TMI, you're welcome. See you guys in a minute. Well, and this is super official. I've got my iPad right here recording. There's no. Hey, that's all I do too. It's easy. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, Don't need the fancy equipment. Oh yeah. But your name? It's Carson Sleep at Sleep Ranch. And yep, yep. you guys are a hundred years old. One hundred fifty. How old's the? Yeah. Let's see. My family settled in 1883, mm -hmm. so we've been at the same place ranching out here since then. So kind of the same same area you know it's changed a lot since then just with technology and yeah. the way of the world but um essentially we're doing close to similar to the same stuff that my ancestors yeah. were doing but how many head you guys run on how many acres if i can be nosy i know you've got neighbors yeah. i know you got neighbors so you don't have to divulge anything you don't yeah you yeah know. no you're that's fine we so it's kind of tricky because we run on four service permits in the summer and those vary in size there's a couple that are about 20,000 acres and another that's like 10,000 acres. And then the rest of the time we run on private, whether that's ours or rented, there's probably another 12 to 15,000 acres. So cool. we have, let's see, about 600 mama cows. And then mm -hmm. we have a background in feedlot where we feed all our calves too. Gotcha. And then they get sent down to Nebraska to be fattened. Gotcha. And we sell them from there. So. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, that was my thing and I appreciated your answer and I just wanted to film it, but, um, I accidentally fed a pregnant heifer partial Christmas tree. Yeah. Now I will say this, we've got a goat that's in everything, like into everything. As yeah, you I love know. that goat. Yeah, Bruce. Hey, you make me a, Bruce. you make me an offer. Heck, I'll just bring him He's to you. He's a good looking goat. I'll just bring him to you, but. He was covered in those needles today and there's still a ton of needles on the tree. So I don't think there's too much to worry about. Sure. Um, and you said, you know, like you said, we feed ours a lot. Um, mm -hmm. 
part of that comes from, we had like 12 acres cleared. So there's like no brush, it's all dirt. So that's why we feed them so well. Um, yeah. But you said yours, they don't eat those trees until there's nothing else to eat. The danger yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So, you know, they're up in the Forest Service permits, which are the Black Hills. So it's all Forest Service, all timbered forests. So it's all pine trees. Um, and we have them up there for like five, four or five, six months. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't, they don't bother the trees at all until it's like this time of year. Like, so last week we got seven feet of snow up there where we round up all of our cows out of the Forest Service in October, but we can't quite get them all just because there's so many yeah. over such a big area. It's hard to get them all. So when there's six, seven feet of snow, even like three, four feet of snow, and they can't get down to the grass, they'll start maybe munching on the pine needles a little bit mm-hmm. just to just to have something in their belly. Um, and that's when they'll abort. And even if they do eat a little bit, they, they won't always necessarily abort, mm-hmm. but they can. So like in 2012, I believe it was, we had a winter storm called Atlas. Mm-hmm. And that was in October when we hadn't rounded up our cows yet. So they got like 12 feet of snow up there and a bunch of our cows had started munching on the pine needles. So a bunch of ranchers on the prairies, they lost a lot of cows because, you know, big drifts and yeah. blowing snow. It, it was just really hard on them. But ours were really well covered and had a lot of, you know, cover up in the forest. But our loss was that they started eating pine needles. And that year we had a handful of port, not all of them, just, just a handful. Few, yeah. So out of 600, a handful. But So it yeah. does happen, but there's, she'd have to be starving to sit there and devour yeah. that many needles. Yes. And so exactly. if she did, I would say at this point, I'm not putting words on you. I'm saying it, in my opinion, if she did at this point, it's probably unrelated. It was probably going to yeah. happen anyway. Um, right. So. Anyway, well, that's good. It makes, it'll help me sleep a little bit because we, yeah. I don't know if you know the importance, but like we lost a bull to pneumonia sure. and yep. that is, that's his calf if she's pregnant. Right. And that's, he was my first venture into Highlands. So I really, really yep. want to carry on heifer or bull. I really want to carry on that, uh, you know, Fred line, but yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Anyway, cool. Well, and you, and so it's you and your wife and you're a new dad or yeah yep our uh we have a son silas he's five weeks old oh man yeah brand last new. week so that brand is new. brand new you hesitated dude that is brand new trying to catch so, up with yeah. you guys you look like oh yeah you look like you're getting enough sleep though so yeah not too bad he's mom must a couple be couple nights here and there <laughs> yeah yep well cool yeah. man hey i know you're busy you're clearly out working right now i appreciate you taking the time yeah. this was, yeah you bet Ken. this was totally on the spot um but you guys, you're sitting, how many subs do you have? Do you know? Um, 22,000. 22. And yep. what's cool about your channel is they get so many different angles of, I mean, it's ranching, man. It's not even farming. Yeah. You're ranching. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And you even rounded up some bison and hung out with, with South Dakota's governor. Who was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they do that every year down in Custer State Park. Mm-hmm. They round up all the buffalo or bison. Um, Super cool. And do their vaccination program and stuff. So that was pretty fun. But well, if maybe one of these days if I make my way up there, you got a horse. Yeah, you, you got a horse that'll hold a bigger guy. <laughs> oh yeah, we got plenty. So we got some little ponies too for the little, kids. So. Hey, there you go. I probably should start with that to be frank. <laughs> yeah. But well, cool, yeah. man. I'll let you go. I'll let you get back to it. Just one more question though. Where's your beard, man? My, my beard. My I face know. is cold. Yeah. I, I struggle to grow one, Chad. I think I need a couple more years. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Well, hey, buddy, I'll let you go, and uh, we'll chat. We'll chat soon and often. So I'll send. I'd send you a shirt, but it's got my brand on it. And I bet if you wear a shirt with somebody else's brand around your ranch, you'd catch a little. <laughs> catch a little I'd play. probably be all right. We can swap. I'll send you one too. All right, cool, buddy. Hey, be safe. Don't work too hard, man. Thanks, man. Happy New Year. Hey, you too, buddy. Take care. Yep. Yeah, talk to you later. We're not keeping Bella. Yes, we are. And you named her Bella. We have Cabella. Mom and Dad have a pig named Bella, don't they? No. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. It's Olivia and... Bella. Is it? I think so. Anyway, she's even digging, look. She's, she's digging like her mom and her dad. We got to get rid of this dog. <laughs> Somebody make us an offer. I'll throw in Bruce. No. What?
Oh my gosh. That was totally spur of the moment. I literally finished editing this video at about 1 p.m. and sent Carson a couple texts and said, dude, what did I do? Did I mess this up big time? <laughs> did I mess this up big time? She's sleeping. And uh, we, should take her to we should take her to Carson. No. Yeah, his Silas, it can be a new baby gift. She's mine. It can be a new baby gift. Oh, man. We need another dog. Like, we need another bruise. I was super nervous because you guys know what Fred and his calf mean to us. I think we're okay though. You saw Bruce. He's covered in pine needles. Would you guys please? Let's see. What was he? What did he say he was at? Hang on. How many subs he got? 22. 22. I don't do this very often. You guys know that. And this has nothing to do with his sub count. He didn't ask me to do this. He didn't know I was going to do it. Man, let's see. Can we get him? He's at 22 and a half, I think. Let's see if we can get him to 25. Do it for Silas. Do it for his little boy. Go watch his most recent video where he talks about bringing him out of uh, the Black Hills and getting away from the pine. I'm sure all these guys have been eating um, pine needles because they're green. The cows, when they see something green, they like to eat it, especially when there's a lot of snow. And the pine needles will cause them to abort. So let's get you home. But go tell the Sleep family and everybody at Sleep Ranch how much you appreciate them. Just make us all feel better about June Bug. Because I certainly do. As soon as we hung up, I texted him. I said, man, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's really going to help me sleep at night. What we'll do is still the original plan. I'll probably give it a week or two. And then I'll take both heifers to get preg checked. And hopefully one's pregnant. One probably isn't. And if she's not, I'm actually going to need help. Because we're going to do some AI or some embryos. Get Tessie set up so we can have a calf. Um, now's like the perfect time because it would almost be a fall calf. So... Go see if you guys can get Carson and everybody at Sleep Ranch to 25,000 subs. That would be awesome. So <laughs> they post quite a bit. I'm so over the dogs. Post quite a bit. You're going to learn something, I promise. It's super casual, super laid back, good Christian family. Anyway, with that said, hope you guys have an amazing and happy new year. Yeah, that's it. You want to say anything, Mom? Yeah. Okay. We're not keeping that dog. Yes, we are. We're not keeping that dog. She's... No. We'll get rid of the mom or the dad then. No, yeah. she's part of the family. We had five puppies. You're lucky there's only one left. You guys think, won't Goose, the dad, try and Humpty He's Dumpty? neutered and I'll get her Neutered, but it, but it doesn't stop him from doing what dogs do. They'll still, mm, <laughs> meh, nope. I better go before I get in trouble. Y'all be good. Don't work too hard. Don't make her weird. <laughs> God bless deuces. Puppy deuces. Better clean yourself. You need a bath. <laughs> she really does.